everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, okay. Yeah, well, welcome everybody. So I'm just, why won't my stand by? There we go. Uh, so co-op versus work integrated learning. So historically, we've always referred to um, this program as co-op. Everyone still refers to it anecdotally as co-op, but it's actually a bit of a misnomer for the program that we have here at Emily Carr. So we're, we're kind of trying to shift the language to work integrated learning. Um, that is a better description. And that's the way that um, the, um, the nomenclature is moving kind of in this field. So um, basically the, what we have that we have previously called the co-op program uh, is defined as work experience or field placement. We're kind of like a, a, a combo of those two things. So that's just a first little thing. Um, okay, how does it work? So these work experience uh, opportunities allow you to earn credits towards your degree. So theoretically you are working in your degree area and you are earning credits while you're doing that. During the course of your degree, you can take up to nine credits of work integrated learning slash co-op credits. That, that's the most that you can do. Um, the work terms can be part-time or full-time and they run up to 12 weeks. So they kind of run over the course of a semester. They can be less and they can be more, but generally they, they run full-time or part-time for 12 weeks. Um, the way that the hours of work break down is that 96 hours of work equal three credits. So double that is six credits and triple that is nine credits. You don't have to do nine credits all at once. Like you could do three three credit co-ops or you could do one six credit co-op slash will <laughs> um, uh, and then one three and one six. Um, so you can sort of combine those in whatever way works for you. And um, also you could be working, say, in the summer, a full-time job. That doesn't mean that you need to propose nine credits. You could actually just propose three. It's whatever works for your academic planning. Uh, just so you know, these credits would replace an open elective or an open studio. Unfortunately, they can't replace critical studies I know, but that's that's just the way that one is. Um, eligibility. So in order to be eligible for the program, you have to have a minimum GPA of 3.0. So uh, that's a good reason to keep your GPA up. Uh, you have to have finished all of your second year courses. So you could theoretically, for those of you that are in uh, second year or, or in foundation, you could do your first placement in the summer after you finish second year. So you don't have to be in third year. Um, you must have the available credits in order for me to place these will co-op credits into. So the, the type that I mentioned earlier, open studio, open elective. So if you've already used all of those up, then I won't have anywhere to place these credits, if that makes sense. Um, the work is related, should be related to your degree in order to qualify, and you must be mentored by a professional in that field. So um, what I mean by that is that say you're in ComD and you get some work uh, creating a logo for a bakery and you're reporting to the owner of the bakery. Um, that would be a great job experience, certainly great to put on your resume. However, it wouldn't qualify for work integrated learning credits because a baker, a professional baker can't mentor somebody in ComD. They don't know anything about it. So um, if you were working for a PR manager uh, or the head of marketing and you were doing ComD, that's, that would totally qualify. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, even though that person isn't a designer themselves, that it's totally related to your degree. And in reality, with your ComD degree, you're probably you could very well go work for a PR firm. So that would qualify. If you had any, you know, um, if you weren't sure, if you got something and you weren't sure, just reach out to us. We're happy to look at it. And I mean, I've had students in ComD do a. Uh, a work integrated learning placement at um, like say uh, a work uh, artist rent center for media, you know, and because we're a multidisciplinary university, 
sometimes we can make that work. So, um, you know, as, as long as it's in a creative field and you're being mentored by someone who is a professional in, a, in that creative field, if that makes sense. Um, I always just mention that if you're an international student and you have a study permit and your work permit is, um, you know, related to that, then obviously you have to make sure that you're not exceeding the hours on the terms of that permit. So um, just make, just, I would just double check. I mean, generally those are that you can work up to 20 hours in the fall and spring or full-time in the summer. So just because this is work for credit, it still counts as work towards that permit. So just, just bear that in mind. Um, okay, so you want to participate, you meet the eligibility. Um, these are the three ways that you can uh, participate. If you are currently already employed and you meet the criteria that I've covered, then you can propose this position for work integrated learning credits. That to it doesn't matter. Somebody, I had a student who worked there for two years. That's totally fine. You would just do a snapshot of the, um, say it was gonna be in spring, of the upcoming semester 12 weeks and you would run just those 12 weeks of your current uh, job as work integrated learning credits. So that would be fine. Um, if you are familiar with arts work, that's our um, online opportunities board. And uh, maybe Jeff can put the link in the chat for anybody that's not familiar with it yet. Um, you can apply directly to positions there uh, that are listed as work integrated learning. I think the categories on arts work are co-ops, internships, work study. So any of those would qualify. Any of the positions that we are aware of all go up on arts work. So that's somewhere you definitely wanna look. You can filter by those co-ops, internships, work study, but I would also suggest that you don't filter, that you look at the positions anyway, because there are positions up there that the employer doesn't necessarily realize it qualifies, but it, it would. So just, just think about that criteria I already covered. And also you might want to um, uh, check in with us if you're really not sure, just write us a quick email with the link and say, hey, does this, would this position qualify for work integrated learning credits? You can also find your own position outside of uh, our opportunities board. You can just go do your own search. And if you think that it met that criteria, again, you can just go ahead and propose that. Um, so once you've got the position is the point at which you would um, submit your uh, proposal. So I'm just gonna go here. Um, yeah, I think I said that already. Yeah, so this little, uh, this little statement in quotes down here, students must be currently enrolled in degree program and or returning to school. Um, usually that is just an automatic indicator that it would qualify for work integrated learning credits. That language or language like that are good things to look for if you're doing your own search or if you're not sure if it qualifies. Um, and it, just as a side note, um, many uh, employers receive funding from the federal gov government or there is some provincial funding to run a job as a co-op or slash work integrated learning. And um, those are just things to keep in mind too. They would have that this kind of language on it. So they need to hire a co-op student or the equivalent, which in our case would be uh, work integrated learning. Other places you can look for jobs. Um, this is just a few. Um, I'm not really going to go into job search strategies right now. There's a really good handout on our resources on arts work called How to Find Work, which goes through a lot of job search strategies. You can also book an appointment with our office and um, we can come up with a plan for you together. I can do an advising session with you, but these are, these are good place to start. Um, okay, so how do I start? This you've already done. You're attending our info sessions. You can make advising appointments. Uh, you want to get your package ready. Um, I've listed the resources which are good for these stages of um, getting ready to participate in work integrated learning. So you want to talk to us, get your package together, start applying for jobs. Then once you obtain a position, that's when you want to submit the proposal form. Uh, that's proposal form, by the way, the handout that we put in the chat at the very, very top, the second, the last two pages of that handout are the proposal form. 
So you can find it there. You can also email us anytime and just say, oh, I found a job. Can you send me the proposal form? And we can do that. And, uh, or it's on Arts Work Under Resources. Um, if you're in that scenario that I already covered and you are already working in an eligible job, the only thing you need to do is get approval from your employer to run it as a work integrated work term. Um, and the way that I would do that really is just say, hey, I just found out I can get credit for my work here. Um, do you have any objection to me running from, you know, like January to the end of March as a work integrated learning term? And if they say, uh, well, what does that mean to me? Um, it doesn't mean that much. It's not a lot of um, uh, commitment from the employer. They're already supervising you as an employee. So they would just continue to do that. And they would have one report to fill out at the end of term uh, that they would have to submit. And it really, it might take them 10 minutes. So it's it's not a lot of work for them to approve you running the, that term of work that you're already doing for them for credit. Um, so if they say yes, then you commit, you would just then um, fill out the form and submit it to myself, or you can just submit it to co-op at ecuad.ca. Um, how long does it take? Um, you know, it really depends. This is a bit of an extreme example of how long it would take. Um, it depends how much work you want to um, put into it. But my suggestion is that rather than cram all this work into a short period of time, it's better to do it in like little chunks over time. So say I'm in second year and it's coming towards the end of the fall term and I wanna get something for this summer. I want a placement this summer that I'm gonna run for credit. So uh, it's good to think of fall as a preparation term, do the research on the companies, look at arts work, see what's out there. Some summer internships actually advertise their uh, openings in November, the, the year before. So it's good to remember that. Um, but some like we, we're seeing opportunities for spring go up now as well. So it, it's kind of all over the map. Um, but pre preparing your draft application package does take a long time. So it's good to kind of work on it, maybe come in and see us in the office. We can do an advising session, make it really strong, work on it some more. So you're kind of not trying to do this all, you know, the day before a job is closing, right? Um, so yeah, in the spring, you would start your job search. Um, you want to definitely customize your application for each job that you apply for and you start applying. And then you'd get your um, proposal in, hopefully towards the end of spring, and then you'd be all ready to go for summer. Um, like I said, it can take a full semester, so you, you, there's no such thing as starting too early. Uh, these are just an example of some of the placements that have taken place in the past, just to give you a little idea, and, and happen. some of them happen regularly. Um, I think we just put one up there for Industrial Light and Magic, which is a brand new internship program, but it's actually for fourth years. It's a little bit different from work integrated learning, but it's still, uh, it's still a great opportunity. So this is just a snapshot. There's tons up there all the time, just go look at arts work. Okay, so you've got a position now what? Um, so yeah, we've covered this already, but what happens with this proposal form is that it comes to me in the um, career development and will office. I review it. Sometimes I get back to you if I think that we can strengthen it a little bit, um, because ultimately this app, uh, proposal form is gonna go to your Dean for approval. So you kind of want to, when you're filling it out, fill it out with that kind of an academic voice um, because these credits replace a course, you're really um, justifying why this work is just as valuable as a course. That's usually the, the, the sort of mindset you want to be in when you're filling it out. Uh, once I get approval back from the Dean, I go ahead and register you in your credits. Uh, you don't have to register yourself. Um, once I've registered you, you get an email saying that, yeah, you're approved, make sure you go and pay your credits. And I also send you the report uh, templates and um, the deadlines for uh, when you have to turn in your reports. And I'll, I'll talk about reports in a minute. Um, oh, actually, I'm talking about them now, now that I look at the same thing. During the course of your placement, um, you do uh, submit two reports. One's a midterm and one gets turned in at the end of the term. 
And um, there's a uh, log book, which is basically like it says week one and you put in the date and then it says number of hours worked and you write down 20 hours that I worked this week. And then you do like a, a very short um, point form summary of what you did that week. Like I met the team and I started to research past projects or whatever, just something very uh, short. Um, and that's due at the end of the term. And then the comprehensive report is due midterm. And it's not really that comprehensive. So um, don't be worried about that. It's one to two pages double spaced, where you just summarize uh, what you've done so far, what you've learned and um, how it's going for you in, in your position so far. And um, we that that you turn into us um, mid midterm. Um, at the end of the term, that's uh, the evaluation goes to your employer, and I talked about that already. Um, they basically fill out a short evaluation uh, that summarizes the work that you did for them that term. At the end, all of those, all that paperwork um, comes back to me. I review it, and I send it back to your dean for grading. Uh, they get back to me and say, yeah, that looks good to go. And then I go ahead and uh, put in your grade, which incidentally is a credit or no credit. Um, you don't get a mark from uh, on your uh, these credits, so they don't affect your GPA in any way. For anyone um, who has any like thoughts in this direction, the only reason really that you wouldn't get credit for your co-op is if you didn't show up for work. Um, or your company just went out of business halfway through your placement, uh, something along those lines. So uh, the evaluation that we get from your employer does not impact whether or not you get credit, just so you know. Um, there's, it, there's, it's been very rare. Whoops, somehow I went backwards. Okay, so what are your responsibilities during the placement? Um, we do send out terms and conditions uh, when you uh, uh, are approved, so you should be familiar with those. Um, there's also some partner responsibilities uh, that you should be familiar with. Um, if there's any employment contract between you and the employer, like outside of the paperwork to do with Emily Carr, just make sure that you're aware of the content. Sometimes there's a non-disclosure agreement or, you know, um, confidentiality agreements, things like that. So just be very aware of what's in the employer's contract if you have to sign one and make sure that you're abiding by the, um, what you've signed there. Um, you should also be familiar with the uh, EMILY's A to Z, just the student policies and um, regulations. The other thing that's important to know is that during your placement, uh, we're here for you in this office. If you encounter any difficulties or um, you're unsure of anything or you think you need any support, um, just, just reach out to us. Um, anything that you come to talk to me about or anyone in our office would be confidential and um, you know, just we're, we're here to support you through your term. Um, some just um, usual FAQs. Um, can I do one outside of Vancouver? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's no problem. Some of you might not be in Vancouver right now, or some people might be heading home or somewhere else for the summer. If you find a placement there, you can absolutely do uh, a placement uh, and get credit for it there. Um, you just have to make sure that it matches all the same criteria. And in, in, in terms of insurance, I just put this in here because anyone working in BC, if you're hired by an employee, you're covered by WorkSafe BC insurance. So if you're outside of BC, there may be insurance implications that you wanna be aware that if you were injured on the job, you're not gonna be covered by WorkSafe BC. So just remember that. And I also add that sometimes when people head out of town and do their placement um, uh, somewhere else, when I email them about their reports, they're like, um, they're lost in space. Like I just can't seem to get a hold of them. So it's really important that you stay a little bit plugged in and make sure that you're aware of your reporting deadlines and you get those reports in on time. Uh, if you've got a freelance position, um, can that be considered? I would say generally no, but we have had some scenarios where it works. Uh, if you're working on a project by someone who can offer mentorship, then it, it might work. Just, just come and talk to us. Are they paid? Absolutely, they should be. And if somebody comes to me, an employer, and wants me to post a job that's unpaid, then I we don't post them. We, we won't support uh, advertising those placements. 
However, some students, if they want to self-identify that they want to do volunteer work and it is related to their degree, then I'm not going to throw up a barrier either. Um, we will, we can treat it just like a paid placement. Um, might want to still think about that insurance piece because if you are not being paid, then you wouldn't be covered by WorkSafe BC. And if you were injured on the job site, that um, you might not have insurance. So just something to keep in mind. Do I pay for my credits? Um, yes, you do. But uh, right now, the, these credits cost 25% less than regular credits. So if you're an international student, that's actually quite a significant savings. Um, that's my presentation. So um, at this point, thanks everyone for listening to me. Um, it, it's like my first presentation virtually, so hopefully I did okay. And um, I think I'm going to invite um, Jeff Malik and Shannon McKinnon into the conversation, and um, we can start working through some of the questions that are in the chat. Oh, hi, Eddie. hi. Go Shannon. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, okay, so we actually had quite a busy chat. Um, so yeah, let's, I see that. Uh, let's start at the top. Um, now, um, I did. I, I, can I say one thing before we start the chat? It's because yeah. it's not, the question is in here. And it was one of the things that Ghislaine and I put this presentation together before, and I should have mentioned, we should have mentioned in it. Another place that you can find uh, Will Opportunities is on campus. So Say if you uh, get an RA ship with health and design, or you get an RA ship with uh, Living Labs or the Shumka Center, um, Good Media Lab, uh, also with Keith Doyle down in um, uh, Material Matters, those quite often will qualify for, co for will credits as well. Okay, so I just wanted to say that before we move on to the questions. So that's another good place to look for uh, opportunities okay is around campus and we advertise those usually if not go and talk to the directors of those areas and see if they have anything going on and i'm going to admit yumi who is late <laughs> <laughs> wait welcome <laughs> okay so jeff go ahead um okay so first of all i did notice that um uh, the information co-op co information for students wasn't visible to students that came in after i first posted it it has been reposted again just now so everybody should have um should have that in the chat at the uh except for this new person but yeah everybody should have that at the bottom of, of their chat um and but i'm happy to start with some of these questions um just Lane, the first question really would be uh, if, if uh, students were late, will they have uh, access to this information or the slideshow later? Yes, we're going to post it on the web. I'm not sure when that will happen, but um, yes, you will. <laughs> or you can always make an appointment to come and uh, see me and I, I can go through it with you in a, in a virtual advising appointment. Um, we have uh, we have a few questions um, regarding uh, international students and uh, their eligibility. Um, first, uh, do international students require co-op permit for the work at uh, integrated learning? I don't believe they would because it's it would just be part of your regular work permit, um, which would allow you uh, up to 20 hours in the fall and spring and up to 40 hours in the summer. I will also add that um, in this office, we're not legally um, able to advise you on work permit matters. Um, you need a certification for that. So anything I say around these is really just anecdotal. Um, you need to check the terms of your own work permit. Um, a co-op work permit, uh, as I understand it, is if you are actually going to take an entire term off to do a full-time position um, in the spring or fall. That's my understanding of that type of permit. Um, because a typical co-op program would run a full-time entire semester uh, as a, a work term. That's not how our program runs. It's, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's, it's more of a combination of work experience and a field placement rather than a traditional co-op uh, program. So that, that nomenclature of a co-op permit, I think, refers more to a traditional co-op program. The other thing is, you if you have questions about your work permit, you should talk to Atilia in the international office. Okay, yeah. so she would have it. She has a certification, which we don't, to advise on that. Okay, so that's 
are we still recording? I thought we weren't going to record. No, we're recording. Okay, yeah, we're go recording. ahead. I'll be editing out the questions, I believe. Uh, can international students apply for a co-op and do so without changing it to a school credit? No, if it's, it, you know, that's kind of a, okay, I'm going to answer that in two ways. So you can apply for a job, that, that's no problem. You don't have to run every job as a co-op. However, if something's been advertised as a co-op and the it's, um, you know, then you may have to run it as a co-op. So whether you're an international student or not. So it really depends on the position um, and what the employer has designated that position as. Um, and, funding. And, and their funding. As I mentioned, some employers have funding that is contingent on the student running that work as a co-op so or work integrated learning. So in those cases, you would have to run it or you would have to decline the job or, you know, so, um, and, and whether you were international or not wouldn't impact that. Hopefully I've answered that question. Um, I think this is kind of connected, but I, I just want you to reiterate on the point of, if international students only have a study permit, but not a work permit, uh, are we still able to do work integrated learning so long as it's within the limit? Um, I'm going to have to refer that question to Otilia. I, I'm not really, like I said, I'm not legally able to advise on work permit matters. So I think that's a question for Otilia in the uh, international office. Um, can work integrated learning during the summer count as credits for the following school term? No. Yes. What do you mean, yes? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, yes, the, those credits, it doesn't matter where they are, they, they, they fall in. So when you receive the credit, sometimes if you only have electives left in your fourth year, that'll bump forward to those. Oh, I see uh, what you're saying, yeah. But if you're talking about um, in the fall, if you can only take a maximum, say, of 15 credits or 18 credits, and in the case of co-op, you can only take 50, you can only take a maximum of 15 credits that semester with co-op credits because it counts as studio. And as you know, you can only take a, a certain amount of studio credits mixed with um, uh, your academics. Uh, so then it wouldn't, if it's taken in the summer, no, it wouldn't count towards, it wouldn't count towards your fall credits. And I just want to add that there, there is a studio overload um, date after which point you, you could increase your number of studio credits. Um, but I mean, you can't, you can't overload your credits like you could with any other course. You with yeah, you you can't, cannot. Yeah. And you can't work in the summer and then register in work integrated learning credits in the fall. Um, the, the hours that you work, those uh, the proposal should be submitted before those hours begin. You can't submit a co-op proposal for work that's already taken place in the past either. So okay. you still have to be within your, your limit of credits per term. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move to the next I'm going to read the next question. Uh, do you have more info about artist apprenticeship program and how it relates to Will. The Artist Apprenticeship Program was um, actually uh, thought up in our office. Uh, and uh, it was great because Shemka was able to get some funding through RBC for that. And you can definitely use those. We, we thought of this because there was a, um, a lack of co-ops that were happening with artist apprenticeships uh, due to the do the fact that a lot of artists don't have, ha, didn't have money to pay for students, uh, pay their wages. So what we, so what we did is we came up with this idea that we would try to somehow secure funding so that students would be paid uh, and get that experience. You can absolutely use those uh, experiences for work and trade learning credits. And I, I think I that, that answers uh, the question. Jim Gem in the Shimka Center is uh, has um, the artist apprenticeship network postings, and I, I've seen the call go out for artists mentors, and so I would keep your eye on Arts Work for the yeah. call for uh, the student participants. Yeah, it's a great it's a Coming great program. Yeah. Okay, Jeff. Next. 
I'm graduating this spring. And if I, uh, if I do a co-op in the spring, and if I want to, to do will with that co-op, could it substitute a second year elective course uh, I left out? Mm, officially, no, uh, because it, it only replaces third and fourth year um, open electives and open studio. Um, you, you could ask your dean um, with, with an exception from the dean, then, then we could process it that way. I just, um, I'm not sure I, if, you know, I, I don't know what the dean will say, but you're always welcome with anything to send an email to your dean and, and ask if they would make an exception. So the, the answer is maybe. With dean approval, yes. <laughs> okay, Jeff. If we've registered to courses already, um, a fourth year student, um, would be finishing uh, these credits up uh, in the, the upcoming semester, I, I'm understanding. Uh, would I have to drop them first to register for these will credits? No, you don't have to drop them, but you, um, you'd you want, here's the thing. Add drop is a date that we can't do anything about. I have no control over moving that date for anybody. Once add drop has passed, you can't drop courses. Um, so you'd want to have your position and um, and get your proposal in pretty quick. Once I've had eyes on the proposal, I can tell you whether you're approved. I don't even have to wait for the dean's approval because we we have a sense. We know what the dean's going to approve and what they're not going to approve. And if it meets the criteria, um, then it, there's no reason it wouldn't be approved. So as soon as I get the proposal, then I can say, yeah, go ahead and drop your courses before ad drop. Um, if you submit your proposal after ad drop, then you, you wouldn't be able to drop the courses. So you, you just wanna keep that in mind. Um, here's another question. Uh, does the no grade on co-op look bad for grad school applications? Can I answer this one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, if anything, it doesn't affect your GPA. So it's a credit or no credit. Uh, so you, you're, it won't have any impact, impact on your GPA. But what it does is it actually looks good because it's shown that you've had some, so when you're applying to school, they see that you've, uh, to grad school, they see that you've done co-ops. Uh, it shows that you've done uh, it's like almost extracurricular activity in a way. And it's shown that you also were a good enough student to be able to do that because you have to have that GPA of 3.0 or above. Um, and it's the same for going on exchange, right? So it's uh, it, it's good. It, it's, it's actually good for an application. Did you have anything further to say to that, Jocelyn? No, no, exactly. It's just like, you know, some people take a lecture series as a course and it, it doesn't have credit assigned to it. It's just a participation. So it doesn't, it doesn't in any way look bad. It looks good. I agree with Sean. Um, could I get a, could I still uh, do co-op if I've completed all of my open studio courses? Uh, do you have any open electives left? I, um, uh, I would say that's, Occasionally, there's been a scenario where somebody secures a position that the employer must run as a co-op and they don't have any credits left. Sometimes in those situations, we have um, recommended the student do credits in excess of their degree. Um, it kind of sucks because you do still have to pay for them. But um, some students have done that because they don't want to, they really, really want the connections and the experience of the position. Um, so yeah, if you've already got all of your credits and you don't have any left, then I would say there's not much advantage unless it's that scenario that I just described. Sometimes a position doesn't have to be run as work integrated learning or co-op. So then I would sort of say to the student, there's no benefit to you running it that way because you're just going to have to pay for credits you don't need. Um, you know, if you wanted to come in and talk to me too with an individual situation, I can advise you as well and give you, uh, you know, customized uh, advice on that one. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to read this question. Um, uh, and I'm going to answer it. It's from Graham <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> oh, no, I'm answering it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you have to sign an NDA, uh, non-disclosure agreement as part of your employment, would you have to redact parts of your logbook? 
I hope to get it. Well, you can just be time. general in your logbook. We don't need specifics. We don't need <laughs> names of shows. Uh, I, I it, you, you could just talk about the, the technical aspects of the work, um, you know, and like we laid down the voice tracks or we mixed this or, you know, like you, you just, you, you, you could just be non-specific. Um, you, I would also welcome any student in this situation to talk to their employer and you could even show your report to them before you submit it to me and just say, is this okay? Just tell me if anything needs to be redacted from here. Well, we could have a conversation about it too. Um, we, have, uh, we have a question from somebody uh, that worked in China during COVID. Um, mm -hmm. I believe this, uh, this doubles up in our email and we're going to be answering that um, as well through mm -hmm. a co-op email. Um, I have the contract, proves my work. How can I transfer these to credits? Um, Unfortunately, you can't apply for credits for work hours you've already completed. Um, the proposal has to be submitted before the work term or the hours that you're going to ask for credit for take place. So we can't do it retroactively for hours that were worked last summer, unfortunately. Um, if I apply, well, we will follow up by email for that, uh, for that question as well. Um, if I apply for co-op at the end of November and request a work integrated learning, work request work integrated learning for the spring, is it too late? No, November's great. The co-op deadline actually, and Jeff could put this in the chat, is um, January 7th, it's in the beginning of the spring semester. It's January 7th, Thursday. But that's the deadline. You can submit before that and you can submit after that too. Like say you'd only find a position in February, you can still submit a co-op proposal. You just can't drop courses to make room for those credits. So but I'll take late proposals anytime. And um, I, I try and make it work with uh, yeah. between myself, the student and the dean. If you've got room in your schedule to do it, then, then we're fine with that. We're really flexible. Yeah. It's really, we're really here to try to facilitate this. And I also wanted to touch back base on the person who worked in China over the um, uh, COVID. That's really unfortunate. And, you know, but in the future, and this is to everyone, if you think that you might uh, have a work opportunity to work overseas, or you're going to be away somewhere, or you're working from home in another country, uh, just get that application into us right away. We don't necessarily have to process it. We can hold it for you too, mm -hmm. until you decide that you want to process that. So, but it's just a really, um, it's unfortunate if we had have known about you working in China, we would have been able to, you know, bring even a late application in and say, we knew about this was happening and this student is now wants to get credit for it. And here's the application. So, uh, because we have to talk to the Dean about it, right? So. Um, another question, I opportunity. didn't confuse anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do opportunities to work under art educators count? If it's within your area of interest or interest, yes. uh, your interest yeah. in study. Absolutely. That'd be great. Um, let's sorry, just moving on. Uh, I'm a fourth year student. If I can take, if I take full-time uh, job as work integrated learning during the spring, would I have to take the term off? Um, it depends how many credits you apply for, for, I mean, that's a bit of an academic advisor question too. Um, obviously it would impact your uh, graduation date if you took the term off and you still had credits. If you work, I mean, I'm assuming you have a mandatory uh, senior studio that you would have to take in the spring. Um, I would really recommend you make an appointment with academic advising to, to talk to them about that. But, you know, students do take a semester off to do a full-time uh, placement. That does happen sometimes. It just means that it impacts your, your uh, graduation date. So, and you could take up to nine credits for that full-time work. Um, so you, you, you could do that if you wanted to, but like I said, there would be an impact on when you, you would fall behind your cohort. Um. Last question that I, um, I believe hasn't been answered um, is, uh, so when, uh, in arts work, when someone comes across a job position, it says co-op, uh, mm -hmm. does it need to be done as a co-op work slash work integrated learning? Uh, can I just do it as a job slash internship? Um, if I just want the experience, um, do, do I have to look for internships in arts work? Uh, 
Oh, yeah, you can answer that, Shannon. Go, go for it. Um, so the way that it, when we post it as a co-op, that means usually that the funding is connected to that position. So you do have to do it as, co as a co-op. Uh, or if the funding is connected, like if it's um, sometimes it'll say, you know, you have to be a Canadian citizen and you have to be under a certain age. And that means that they've received their funding from um, the federal government. And that means that you do have to be registered in uh, to register for work integrated learning credits or co-op credits. Um, if it's if it doesn't, if it's just an internship and there doesn't seem to be anything, check with us and we'll, we can find out for you. Uh, and um, it's usually just tied to funding, mm -hmm. but otherwise we'd support it. We want you to get have that experience and get jobs too. I mean, yeah. we're not going to uh, hold you hostage over that. So do you mind if I uh, add that? Yeah. Um, what yeah. I'm posting, I, I do a lot of this posting on arts work. And when I find a position that is eligible for co-op, you're going to see co-op in the, maybe not title, but you're going to see it in the posting as uh, something that I check on. Um, now, th that doesn't mean that these positions have to be run that way. If you have any questions, reach out. I'll be really quick at getting back to you um, because I, I would hate for anybody to not apply for a position because mm -hmm. they're not going to be running it as a co-op. Um, I also am looking for positions for you guys to have as, uh, to, to just find jobs even if you don't qualify, if you're in second year or if your GPA might not be as a uh, 3.0. I'm, I'm looking for everybody as well as alum. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> and that, that really is an important message to just, if, if you have any questions, um, just shoot us an email. Um, myself and Shannon and Jeff monitor that email, um, Jeff mostly, but um, you know we, we get back to people pretty quick. Um, if you just have a quick question and, and don't want need to make an appointment or anything, that's absolutely fine. But if you have an individual uh, scenario that you just want to run by us, that's absolutely what we're here for. Um, we're here to help you put your package together. We're here to help you with your job search. We're here to help interpret the work integrated learning slash co-op program for you. Um, and just answer your any questions around employment and credit for um, for work in your field. So remember that. Um, we could probably stop recording now. And there's one other thing I was just going to 